Hello everyone, so I'm on a trip right now but I really wanted to make this video and the video is how to make a good project for your resume for placements. So having a good project in your resume is really important for placements because when the interviewer comes he's interested in your DSA skills, he's interested in your problem solving skills but he's also interested in your work skills, the projects that you've done. Because in the company you will be working right, so he's interested in the work that you've done, the projects that you've made. So having a good project in your resume is really important for getting selected in a good company. So I have four steps for you and if you follow these steps then at the end of these steps you'll have a good project in your resume that will improve your chance of getting selected in your dream company. So let's get started with step number one and that is finding a field that you like. So when you look around the software world you have lots of fields right, you have web development, you have android development, you have machine learning, you have big data, you have data science, data analytics, there's a lot of things. Okay, so you need to pick one field that really resonates with you, you know. So if you're someone who likes apps, then you can choose app development. Or if you're someone who likes making websites, or if you're someone who likes looking at websites or just curious about that, then you can choose web development. Or if you're someone who likes playing with data, you can choose data science. So something like that, choose one field that you really like. Now, if you ask me which field has the best scope, then I would highly suggest go with web development. Because almost every company has a need for a web developer and being a web developer is pretty much in demand all the time. But anyways, if you are interested in anything like big data, Android development, whatever it is, choose that. Okay, so that's step number one. Find a field that you like, whatever it is, Android development, web development, big data, whatever it is, find a field that you really like. And this is the field where you'll be making your project in. Now, once you pick a field that you like, then there's a cheat code for you. Okay, so this is like a shortcut. So what you can do is you can take a course. Okay, so this is a cheat code. After this, you don't need to do anything. This is like a cheat code step for you. So you can take a course and I would highly suggest to you that you can go on Cryo and Cryo is a website for learning software like development skills. They have a course on full stack development, which is a great course and it makes you into a full stack developer. I teach you everything that you need to know to become a full stack developer and give you great projects to work with. So you can check out Cryo. I'll give a link in the description and you can see for yourself. They also have a free trial, so you can book their free trial and see for yourself whether you like the course or not and then you can take it. And if you want, you can even take a course on Udemy. There's a lot of courses on Udemy from which you can choose and whatever course you can choose, they'll also give you some projects, you can make that and that's like a cheat code for skipping through all the next steps. But if you don't want to buy a course, then let's get to the next steps. And step number two is learn the basics. So suppose you chose web development, right? Let's go with web development. Then learn the basics. What is front end? What is back end? What is HTML, CSS, JS? What is, what are the frameworks? What are the different technologies? What are the different tech stack in web development? Learn the basics, okay? For learning the basics, you can go on YouTube and just search something like what is web development? What is data science? How to become a data scientist? Something like that and learn the basics. Learn the technologies that are required. Learn the basic concepts of whatever field that you've chosen. Learn the basics, that's step number two. Once you're clear with the basics, once someone asks you what is data science and you're able to answer, or once someone asks you what is web development and you're able to answer, then that means that you've learned the basics and now we can go on to step number three. Step number three is actually choosing the project. And this is the most important step, okay? This is where a lot of people screw up and they make a project that is like, you know, uh, useless or they make a project that is pretty much, you know, recycled over and over again or very common. So this is a very important step and, and you have to choose a project in such a way that it is a bit unique, okay? And even if you take, took a course like I mentioned in the cheat code step, then you need to make your project, obviously you'll have a project in the course, but make your project a bit different from the one in the course, okay? So he, here are the criteria that I feel your project should have. First, your project should be unique, okay? So even if it is a clone of any other app, even if you're making an Instagram clone, make sure that your name or some features are different from the clone app. Okay, or if you're making a game, suppose you're making an Angry Bird clone, then make sure that your game that, you've, you're, that you're making is a bit different. So your project should be unique. That's what I would say is criteria number one. Criteria number two, very important, is your project should be solving a real life problem. Now obviously, uh, a lot of times you'll have to think a lot in this because most of the real life problems are already being solved like you have Zomato, Google Maps, Uber, a lot of things like that. But if you look around, you'll still feel like there's a lot of real life problems that they have no solutions for, that the software world has no solution for. Even some menial tasks like moving around your college, you can't find your way, you can make an app for that, or you can make a website for that. Anything small, 
but it should be solving a real life problem even if it is as small as finding your way in uh, in your apartment you know in your like uh, community whatever it is even anything small it should be solving a real life problem because that really impresses the interviewer and that shows the interviewer that the job that you're doing is helping someone even if it is just helping you it should be solving a real life problem because the work that you do in a company will be associated with the real world right you will not be making angry bird clones in the company unless you're going into game development obviously so make sure that your project is solving a real life problem even if it is something minute even if it is something very small make sure that it is solving a real life problem i can't put enough emphasis on this this is very important the next criteria for a project is that it should be full stack so what do i mean by that so whenever you go on a website or an app you can see something at the front right the front page you can see something with which the user can navigate the user can see data the user can input data and they can navigate that's because they have a user interface right so the project that you're making make sure that it, that it has a user interface make sure that it has a front end so whenever someone apart from you is using your project they can understand this by looking at it what it does and it makes it easier for them to use it that that will be really good for your project so make sure that it has somewhat of a user interface even if you're working with data even if you're in the field of data or machine learning make sure that it has somewhat of a user interface so like i said anyone apart from you can understand what it's doing what's the point which makes it easily accessible and the next part in making your project full stack is obviously having a back end meaning make sure that it has some database make sure that it's working with a database so even if you're work- making a website even if you're making a simple app you can put something like a login registration and you can store the login data in a database okay but it's really good and it's really important that you have that your project is working with a database okay so try to put in one database at least which will which can be like a login sign up database or any other database if you have, if you have an idea of that but try to make a project that encompasses both front end and back end which will again impress the interviewer even forward once you've understood the criteria of the project then you can go ahead and select a project for yourself So while selecting these are the things that you should select or think of. First is the name of the project. So try to give it a cool and unique name. So be a little creative. A little creativity is all I ask for. So try to be a little creative while thinking of the name. Don't give it a washed up name or anything like that. So think of a name for your project. Think of the basic idea of what the project will be doing like the criteria that I've mentioned along with that. Think what the project will be doing. Write it down somewhere like the base of the project. What will it be doing? and the third choose the tech stack that you'll be using while making the project so once you've learned the like basics of the field web development and android development like i mentioned in step number 2 then now you've understood like what are the basic tech stacks of these fields right so choose on the tech stack like what will be used what will you be using for the pages what will be using for the data what will you be using for each part of your project try to think of that and if you're not able to think of that right now then that's okay you can leave it for later but try to think what you'll be using for each part of your project for example if you're making a web page what will you be using for that web page for example if you're making a database what will be what will you be using for that database so you'll have to research a bit for this step but try to think of the tech stacks that you'll be using for your project and write them down so these are the three things first is the name second is the basic idea and third is the tech stacks that you'll be using so now that you've decided on the project then we can go to step number 4 that is learning and then building the project So before you build anything you do need to learn about the tech stacks in depth so you've already learned the basics but now you need to learn in depth before you build anything so whatever tech stacks that you've chosen you can learn about them online so you have a lot of content on youtube for free there's a lot of youtube channels this code with harry this telusco this amigo code there's a free code camp there's a lot of youtubers who make great content on development for free even for machine learning even for data science there's a lot of good youtubers who are making great content so you can start learning from there whatever tech stack you were using to start learning from there and start creating so i believe on learning on the go instead of just learning theory 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 i feel that the best way to make a project is that you make something then you learn something then again you make that then again you learn something it's like that so learn something implement it then learn something then implement it and like that learn on the go so whatever page were there in your project whatever was there in your project whatever component that was there of your project learn about it learn how to create that and then create it then again if there's a new component that you want to create learn about it and then create it okay learning on the go is really important instead of just learning and then creating learn on the go learn as you create okay so learn and then build your project and at any point if you get stuck if you're not able to you know 
think of how to create a particular component then there's two things you can do first is that you can ask on stack overflow or most probably someone somebody would have already asked that on stack overflow so just ask your question in google and uh, if someone has already asked that google will show that but by chance if nobody has asked that doubt then go on stack overflow make an account and properly ask your doubt properly okay like show the work that you've done show the doubt and then ask the doubt on stack overflow someone will get back to you or two you can just ask your senior so if you're in college you would have a lot of people in development you would have a lot of people making projects you can ask them ask your seniors ask your teachers ask your friends and then you can clear that doubt or you can just google it most probably somebody else has asked it before you so if you have if you have any doubt you can clear it like that so learn and build a project and then that's it once you made the project take some ample amount of time while making the project and uh, keep notes okay so this is something i advise to almost everyone that comes to me for uh, placement preparation that whenever you're making a project make notes okay or you can obviously put comment on the quotes but apart from that make notes about the component that this is this component it's doing this this is this component it's doing this because once you make a project after 5 months after 6 months you tend to forget that what was this page doing what was this component doing or what was the point of this so if you have make if you have made notes that will be really helpful for you at the end when you go for placement before revising right so it will be really helpful just before the placement for revising so try to make notes for everything that you do in the project and obviously uh, make comments in your code so that your code is easily understandable so that was step number 4 and now i have a bonus step for you so the four steps are done but let me give you a bonus step a bonus step that will really really help you and that is deploying your project okay so if you have made an app if you made a website whatever you have made try to deploy it somewhere either on github or even better try to put it either on the play store or try to put it on a domain on the web okay and that will really really impress the interviewer trust me on this when when the interviewer sees that you've actually published an app on google play that does send some good impression or if the interviewer feels like or if the interviewer sees that you you have a website and you can just send him the link of that website you can just tell him that www.thisismywebsite.com he'll open that and it will impress him okay so you can deploy your website that's like a bonus tip for you and that's pretty much it after these four steps you'll have a good project that you've made yourself you've learned everything and let me tell you it's going to be tough if you're doing development for the first time you're going to be stuck in pretty much every step okay you will you might be confused about what to do you might have no answers and it will be tough but once you make a project yourself right that's when you'll actually learn things if someone else is doing it for you then you're just getting that you're not learning that only when you're stuck only when you're confused only when you're in desperation is when you learn the most is what i feel okay so it's okay don't beat yourself about it it might be tough for you at the beginning keep at it keep it and give it some times keep at it give it some times give it some 2 3 4 months whatever it takes and then make a good project put it on your resume and that will like really impress your interviewer that will really increase your chances of getting selected